It yeah. Just came from there. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I will now call to order this meeting of the uh, Scarborough, Town of Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals, the March 13th, 2024 meeting. We did not meet on February 14th, so this is the first meeting since January. I will call it to order. With that, I'll invite our members to stand and uh, observe the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Doreen, would you call the roll, please? Peter Freilinger? Here. David Bork? Here. Michelle Stevenson? Here. And Christine Snow? Here. We have four members, which is a quorum. We don't have any matters before the board tonight, so we will not worry about um, any of that. Uh, we know of a couple of absences, and we hope to see Kyle, uh, but if he does not show up, again, we have a, a, a quorum here. Um, the first matter is the approval of minutes for the January 10th meeting. Um, hopefully, people have had a chance to re review those. Any um, Jason, and do I have a motion to approve? Christine, thank you very much for motion to approve. Second? I'll second. Thank you, Shelley. Uh, is there any discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, since I was not here, I will abstain from voting on, the, on this. Did you have a chance to review the meeting language? I, I did not see it on uh, TV. However, I did read the uh, minutes or the uh, findings. I can't take Exactly. We don't have a quorum for approval then if you're going to abstain, unfortunately. Well, we, can we can I didn't say I was going to. Well, okay. I didn't use that word. Well, I guess I might have. Um, I did read the notes. Okay. And to me, the special, in particular, the uh, findings of facts okay. I thought were well-grounded, and I agree with what the outcome was. Then I would appreciate you not abstaining then because that's really the only material item from the January meeting. Okay. Um, so if, if that's okay, please don't abstain. And, and I, is it okay then to abstain from the minutes, uh, minute meetings, minutes, excuse me, the minutes of the meeting? Since I, I, I didn't actually. Again, I'd rather you not. Um, but if you okay. don't, if you feel that that's fine, we can. All right. We can have those hold it. Yeah, we can hold it. It's not the. What? Maybe no, Kyle no. will show up. Yeah, I mean, gotcha. Let's move to the next thing. Let's, let's, let's let me do this. I, I, will, I will vote on both. Okay. okay? Having, having read everything in the packet and understanding what it contains, all right, I can vote on that. That would be great. And, and, and again, the only material item was, in fact, the appeal that we'll just, we'll be discussing yeah. the final facts here in a moment. So um, that would be great. So if I could see um, a show of hands approving the minutes then. That's a unanimous vote. We will move to the next item. Um, we do have a, the approval of the draft written decision for appeal number 2758, limited reduction of yard size residential appeal by the Knickerbocker Group on a behalf of Robert and Carol Gustafson, 66 Scott Ho Hill Road. Um, again, that, if we've had a chance to review those, I'd ask for a motion to approve the final findings. Thank you, David. So moved. A second? Adam. Christine, thanks. Any further discussion? I found the notes to be exactly as we discussed. Terrific. A uh, show of hands to approve, please. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. We have um, one other item, uh, uh, substantive item on the uh, agenda tonight, which is the election of officers for 2024. This has been deferred a couple of meetings while we were waiting for um, the uh, renewal of certain members and um, by the uh, appointments committee and, and the rest, but I think we are ready to go here. Um, I have spoken with Kyle and uh, and with uh, with Richard. They're um, uh, they would endorse renewing the terms for myself and for Christine, but without uh, anything, I would I would ask just for comment from the from the, the members. I will make a motion to elect you, Peter Freilinger, and Christine Snow as chair and vice chair. Great. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, David. Um, all in favor? That is unanimous. We have our officers for 2024. <coughs> and I would thank Christine as well for her service over the past year um, for the times where I have not been there or have decided that the meeting had to start at 7.30. Um, in those instances, thank you very much, Christine, for, for covering for me. I really appreciate that. Um, 
any comments? I, I think we do have some comments just because we've had two board meetings now with no um, uh, items of, on the agenda. But I think we're expecting the, the, the deluge, as it were. So maybe we can talk about that a little bit. David. Yes, indeed. That's something I was going to bring up anyway with all the storm damage that, that's been done in the area. I'm sure we're going to be seeing a flood, literally, mm. of appeals coming our way uh, this year. Uh, it's just a matter of time for people to try to put together a case and approach us. And these are going to be difficult uh, appeals yeah. uh, for us to review and approve. But um, I think it'll probably happen. Also, I understand that the, uh, the flood hazard uh, map has changed. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian. Uh, yeah, just really quick. Um, we did receive our letter of final map determination. I'm not sure if I spoke about that at the January meeting or not. We received it in December. We have to adopt the new flood maps and the new uh, updated ordinance, floodplain ordinance, by June 20 of this year. They go effective June 20, and if we have not adopted the maps and the ordinance officially in the town, we risk being kicked out of the National Flood Insurance Program. So we will be working diligently to get that done. Will that, um, Brian, will, will that have an effect on timing for potential shoreland variances or shoreland terminations? No, um, the floodplain doesn't really have anything to do with shoreland. So, okay. so your your role in making those uh, setback to the greatest practical practical extent really that won't have any impact on it. Where okay. it gets, where it will have some impact is on those folks who want to do something, and we, those maps aren't effective until June 20. But we've we've been in that holding pattern now for years, literally for years. Um, and uh, so they have to make the decision: do they want to, do they want to go and, and and conform with the new maps, or or stay with the old maps? And I've been telling people all along: I can't force you to go with the new maps, but the smart money is right. designed to the new maps. For the shoreland ordinances, um, we're observing the shoreland changing as a result of these storms that we've seen over the last three months. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean we will see potentially? or either see or need to request differential property maps when folks come to us with those sorts of, of questions? I'm not quite sure I understand your question. Well, I, 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 well what I'm thinking is, is when we, we have seen these shoreland um, uh, uh, requests come, come in the past, we've been given a map or, or a, a, a property map, which is as of you know, a certain date. Mm -hmm. um, should we be in a position where we would be, or you as the uh, as a CEO would be requesting updated maps so that we have something as of post <coughs> these storms? Or normally, normally when it's a shoreland setback issue, yeah. that generally is fresh information. They okay. generally, you're generally not going back ten years and mm -hmm. in, in using those maps. They because the highest annual tide line for coastal properties, the latest published highest annual tide, mm -hmm. is the starting point for the shoreland zone, yep. and that varies from year to year. Okay. Not by a lot, but it, it, it may vary more now. Yeah, that, that's kind of the question. It's, it's <clears> so, yeah, yeah. The, it, it'll be a, it will be a, uh, something to, to be concerned about. Because yeah. yeah. that maximum tide this year has, has been higher than anything I've seen in recent years. Yeah, I'm not sure. They, DEP publishes the highest annual tide for shoreland purposes, and the last time they published it was 2018. So I, I'm not sure why they're not doing an annual publish of that, but um, I did attend the workshop, uh, uh, kind of a um, primer, if you will, on sea level rise um, just the other day. Uh, folks from FEMA and their consultants have been doing some serious mapping of potential sea level rise and I don't want to. I don't want to scare anybody. But that link will be available if you go to the FEMA website. You can find that yeah. map, and the projection for high to moderate um, sea level rise by twenty. I want to say twenty fifty one was like the farthest out. Maybe they went, mm -hmm. or it might have been twenty one hundred. I can't remember. But by 2051, the change, should they be correct in their, 
their right. um, estimations are going to be pretty dramatic. Yeah, got it. Okay. So something for us to think about and something, of course, to prepare for. There has been a lot of damage along the coast um, for homes and for property. So, um, yeah, uh, Christine, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure which house you're talking about. Oh, my God, the blue yellow one. I, I sat and watched the way the boulder were coming. Oh, you want me to put it on? Yeah, Okay, there. sorry. <laughs> so my question is, what are the rules if someone, if you already have a non-conforming property and it's now been destroyed and your property is being encroached by nature, what is your responsibility if someone walks in the door wanting to replace their house? Well, there's there's provisions in both the floodplain ordinance and the shoreland ordinance and even in um, DEP's uh, dune regulations for houses that are severely damaged by storm uh, run up. So there's provisions for that. It's not like they're it's not like they're out a lot. Now, if their house has been damaged, severely damaged by by a storm more than once, different rules kick in. So. I don't know of any properties down there that have been severely damaged more than once at this point. I've watched it personally. Yeah, but, but when I say severely damaged, it's got to be damaged by 50% of the market value or more. And so that, that's a very specific thing that we look at the cost estimates for the repairs and so on and so forth. So, so it's still an individual call? I mean, if someone wants to rebuild that house, I'm really not quite sure I understand where you're going with it, but under the floodplain regulations, there's a thing called substantial damage and substantial improvement, okay? So under substantial damage, if a house is damaged by storm by 50, per, the cost of the repair is being 50% or more of the market value of the house, that's called substantial damage, and now that house has to be brought up to floodplain standards. So it would have to be elevated it would have to be um, made compliant with floodplain. It, it could be completely wiped out. That's obviously more than 50%, so it could be replaced. Where it gets a little tricky is DEP has dune regulations that are somewhat different than floodplain regulations in, as far as what they'll allow in the dune. So if you're not in the dune, then it's not an issue, but most of those properties are either in the frontal dune or the back dune. But Shoreland has um, provisions for houses that are damaged or replaced by 50% or more. They can be, um, they can get a permit and, and build them back. They'll be, they'll still be that determination by the yeah. zoning board uh, of whether or not they've met the setback to the greatest practical extent. So there's, yeah. there's a process, but it's not like, it's not like they're done. No. And, and, and Christine, that's where my concern came back, which is the, 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 the shoreland or, or the, the, the line from which we determine that setback is creeping yeah. into, mm -hmm. in, into lots. Yeah. Um, and, and so the, um, and, and again, I, 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 with some knowledge on this, there's a house at the end of, of uh, CV's uh, Landing, which we approved in terms of a setback, of, 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 a, of a shoreland setback, where that shoreland has crept forward about four or five feet as a result of these recent storms. So we would have had a different determination, probably. Um, or it, and we better. Well, no. I mean, you can't. Or, yeah, we yeah. can't predict the future. We no, no, can't no, no. predict what nature's going to do. Exactly. I'm, so we can react to it, no. and we can try to be preemptive and, and elevate yeah. and no. move back. But and, 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 you don't know where that's going to be. My my point is just that had the had that come before us today as opposed to three years ago, yeah. We might have made The current a conditions would, would look different. Exactly, yeah. Uh, maybe, Christine, you were wondering if the town or the municipality has a role in, in repairing that structure. No. Oh, okay. No. I, I want to be clear they that... They have a role in saying, uh, you, you cannot do this. Yeah. 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 We don't. We don't. We don't. There are provisions in the Dune Regulations, Chapter 355 Dune Regulations, 
that appear to say at some point they can say we're not giving you a permit to yeah. rebuild. I don't enforce those regulations, nor do I completely understand them. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so where does that come from? The state? DEP is the state regulations, wow. yeah. So yeah. the state would say to you, no, that's not for your county. Most of these would require a, a, a DEP permit, either for a dune permit or a permit by rule, right. depending on what the activity is. Right. So we can issue our like permits, but we can't really issue until we know that DEP is issuing. Exactly. Now, there may be a variance provision, you know. I don't know how easy a variance from DEP is to get. I can't imagine it's easy, but there, uh, my message here is there are provisions in all of those ordinances that, that we would never necessarily kill the project unless there was no, because of geotechnical issues, Erosion and whatnot. There was no way to put it safely back. Mm -hmm. In that, in those cases, there there is funding through FEMA that you have to apply for as a municipality to buy out properties. Um, so that might be a last ditch yeah. sort of effort. But anyway, it's not. It, we may we have a role to play, but we're our role is not to I say see. you can't build back. Yeah, that's good. I hope someone's saying that. No. At least at this point. Uh, um, one more question, sorry. Um, and where'd it go? Um, okay. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, yeah. David. So, uh, Ryan, my question is, <clears throat> of these uh, issues on the shoreland for rebuilding or whatever, you know, for damaged property, currently damaged properties or damages that might occur, uh, in the immediate future, will these, those be coming to us in terms of a variance request? And if so, what type of variance is that? Is that an undue hardship or practical difficulty no. or what? The, the only way it would come to you under floodplain, I mean, there is a variance process under floodplain as well. You would rarely ever see that. But what you might see is I might make a determination that that's substantial damage based on the cost estimates in, in our, our assessed value, and the homeowner may say, no, it's not. They may argue, and so they may come come to you for an administrative appeal yeah. on my decision, but that's really about the only role you would play there, other than in shoreland making that determination about setback. Yeah, and in, 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 in that sense, the shoreland, too, is not just the, quote, unquote, the shoreland on the, on, on the Atlantic side, but it's also where... Um, uh, 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 river riparian marshlands may have expanded as a result of the runoff that we've seen and the 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 flooding that the the, the flooding that we, we we are seeing um uh, as we kind of go through the spring here and and the other question i had too is um if vertin if new vernal ponds emerge as part of this um this season of of um of of uh, noah like floods um, does that start to also impact you as the CEO as you look at properties and where, where um, uh, good sites exist on properties? Not so much. Um, okay. it, it would play a bigger role in larger scale developments like subdivisions and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say it doesn't play any, any part, but okay. I don't see that as being a significant okay. issue unless the whole property is riddled with vernal pools, and that's not usually the case. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thanks. My mind is I've, <laughs> I've only got one question, one answer left, so <laughs> please. Are those homes insured down there? Every home has to be insured. Really? They can get insurance? You, you've got to have insurance. Are you talking about flood insurance? Two different things. Uh, okay, and, and you don't have to have homeowners insurance if you mm -hmm. outright own the home, do you? Correct. And actually, that, that, and, and functionally, every financed home I mean, has to have should. insurance. Um, if you have, if but the, do you? How many people do you know that don't have homeowners insurance? No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> very, very few. Um, but, but, uh, but the, how many insurance companies will? In, I mean, I, I know State Farm won't insure a house that's on the waterfront. Most of those, or many of those homes, may not have. Um, Standard market insurance. Yeah, they may have to go to an, a non-standard um, insurance provider, yeah, which is expensive. It, which is expensive, exactly. But um, but yeah, the, the only houses houses I know of that are uninsured are 
homes that have been in families for generations and therefore haven't had financing for decades. If you have financing, though, um, all of the federal um, mortgage agencies require a homeowner's insurance policy, including um, uh, 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 natural, damage, natural disaster damage cover. Um, so if you've got a mortgage, by definition, you've got insurance. Um, and, uh, but yeah, if, if, you, if you've got cash on the barrel, then you're allowed to put all that cash at risk. I'll just put a plug in. There is a, a council workshop on March 20th um, about the map, the FEMA map adoption okay. process. Um, we'll be having Sue Baker, the state floodplain coordinator, will be coming to speak about that as well as our planning director, Autumn Spear, and myself. So it should be informative. Um, it, we're not going to talk about the storm damage. It's yeah. all about the adoption of the sure. new maps process. That's a week from today. It, uh, next month. Ye, that's correct. Yeah. Could you send around the detail on that to the mm -hmm. to the members? The agenda will probably be posted on the website as well on the gotcha. calendar. But if just yeah. a yep. you know, reminder us, yep. that, that would be helpful. Yeah. So yeah. here in council chambers, yeah. Okay. At seven at seven. No. We'll get the email. I think it's six. <laughs> I think it's at six. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, watch lot, watch the calendar, and I'll I'll give you the yeah. I'll give you the info. A lot of those workshops end up being at six, five thirty or six. So for yeah. the public, you can just go to the website, click up at the top on calendar, and you'll see all of the various meetings and committees and stuff, and just look for the workshop. Click that, and the agenda, the time, the place, the date, everything will be there. Well, without any other comments from the zoning board, this has been a good conversation to prep us for what will be, I'm sure, a busy rest of the year. Um, but anything else? No, nope. I don't have anything. Motion to adjourn. Uh, do I have a second? Uh, David, uh, all in favor? All right. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.